Welcome to our review on factors affecting transpiration. So the first thing we need to know then is how we can actually measure transpiration as an experiment. And we use a bit of equipment called a potometer, which you can see in the diagram there. Now, the key thing here is that in that capillary tube, you can see there's a little air bubble. So what we actually find is, as the plant actually takes up more water, the air bubble is going to move. And because there's a scale behind there, we can work out exactly how far it moves. So the way we set this up is we take an air bubble into the capillary tube, and then as the water moves into the chute and evaporates from the leaves, the air bubble moves towards the plant. So we can literally record how far that bubble moves in a certain time, and then we can use the calculation of distance divided by time to give us the rate. Obviously, it's good practice to repeat your measurements and not just do it once and take it as gospel. So there are four factors that can affect the rate of transpiration in our plants. The first one is temperature. So that as we increase the temperature, then water will evaporate faster from the leaf. So that that means that diffusion of water vapour out from the leaf becomes faster and therefore the rate of transpiration increases. And the shape of the graph of temperature is given at the bottom there, so it's just a diagonal line. So the higher the temperature, the faster the rate of transpiration. The second factor is air movement. So as air moves over the surface of our leaf, then any evaporated water molecules are going to be moved away from the surface. The faster the air is moving, the faster the water molecules are being carried away. And as a result of this, we end up with a steeper concentration gradient between the leaf and the air. And as a result of that, water diffuses out of the leaf faster. So you can see the graph at the bottom there. It's not just a diagonal line. It starts to curve at the end. Now, the reason for that is even when the wind blows faster and faster, there will come a point when it's not air movement that can affect the rate of transpiration anymore. Our third factor is light intensity. Now, key point here is that the stomata open in the light and they close in the dark. So that if we increase the light intensity, then more stomata will be open and therefore more water will evaporate. However, we will hit a maximum rate here because the leaf only has so many stomata. So once they're all open, we can't open anymore, even if we shine more and more lights on it. So the shape of the graph in the bottom left there, you can see increase in light intensity increases the rate of transpiration initially, but then it levels off as a result of all of the stomata being open. The final factor that we need to consider is humidity. First thing we need to know is what is humidity? And that is the amount of water in the air. So something with a high humidity has lots of water in the air, something with a low humidity only a very little bit of water in the air. So what we actually find here is that decreasing the humidity will create a steeper concentration gradient. And as a result, then decreasing the humidity means water diffuses out of the leaf faster. So just go careful with this one that when you're looking at the graphs, that your humidity as it increases, decreases the rate of transpiration. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now state the factors which affect transpiration. You can describe how to carry out an investigation into transpiration using a potometer, and you can explain how environmental factors will affect the rate of transpiration.